All right. Well, thanks everybody uh, for joining this morning. We'll go ahead and get started. And I did turn the recording on. So anybody wants to take a look at this afterwards or share it with anybody on their team, we're happy to do that. And uh, I'm Jeff with Sockeye. And I think I know most of the people that are on here today. Again, thanks for joining. And uh, today we're going to cover the uh, HH2 remote time entry and daily field reports. And with us today is Kevin Hadley, who is VP of Sales with HH2 Cloud Services. And uh, thank you, Kevin, for doing the presentation today. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Yeah, and we have a great relationship with HH2. We have customers that use a lot of their different products. I know Kevin will probably touch on that a little bit at the beginning. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing, Kevin, and I will let you take it away. We'll spend most of our time in the software, and please feel free to ask questions, or if you want to use the chat, you can use the chat panel. I'll keep an eye on that, Kevin, to see if any stuff comes in over there. Perfect. Okay. Well, again, thanks so much, Jeff. Uh, we have had a great relationship uh, with uh, Sockeye Skyline uh, folks for Gosh, I think as, uh, as long as HH2 really has been in the uh, Sage community for roughly, you know, 15, uh, close to 16 years, uh, we do have a number of their clients that use our products and services. And, uh, and so, again, we appreciate the opportunity. I do know that some of our attendees uh, on here today are, are Sage 100. Um, uh, Jeff, do you know if everybody is Sage 100? Should we kind of speak to one or both, or should we just kind of leave it kind of generic since uh, some people may want a copy of this recording? Yeah, you can leave it generic. That's fine. And um, the product's the same no matter what version of Sage you're on. So it, I think that'll probably work well. Okay. All right. Excellent. Okay, so with that being said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop my video um, uh, and then I'll also share my screen because um, I just, just so we can conserve on some bandwidth. So I'm going to stop my video there. Uh, again, to each one of you, thanks so much um, for taking the time to join Jeff and I for this presentation. As Jeff Wells, because we've done a number of these with, um, with their company and their customers throughout the year. I love interactive presentations or demonstrations, and I would really uh, enjoy um, having you answer or, excuse me, ask some questions throughout the presentation. Um, you should be able to see my screen now. It looks like, uh, Jeff, can you see this presentation? Just wanted to make sure. Yep, we've got it. All right, excellent. Okay. Um, so, a few housekeeping tips, and then I'll kind of come back to the opening slide. Uh, just first and most, uh, know that it will be available through your speakers. Uh, if you've called, it will be available on the phone. Um, all attendees, uh, I believe, uh, this time have been muted for a clean listening experience. And as we record the session, um, it is being recorded. After you typically send out uh, the, the link to the, the Zoom meeting, Afterwards? Yep, we certainly can send that out. Okay. And uh, again, if you haven't done so, just to my screen, there's really not much more I can do to maximize my screen in the presentation. So just be aware of that. And again, there's a couple we'll be monitoring the questions that come in, and we're more than happy to answer those throughout the presentation. Okay. We may not take up the full hour. Uh, we again want to be courteous of your time. Um, let's talk a little bit more uh, about HH2. Let me just uh, play this slide here. Everything seems to be running a little bit slower. I'm not sure why. Uh, but uh, let me talk quickly about HH2. So we were born in the construction uh, industry. Uh, we were born out of a general contractor here in the state of Utah. As I mentioned, a little over 16 years ago as a company. Uh, these products, this is that you'll take a look at, they were really built from the ground up uh, for connection. That is our vertical, so to speak. Uh, every single one customers, uh, 4,000 plus strong, are all in the uh, industry. 
and uh, use various systems and, and services, et cetera. So please, we're very entrenched in the, in the construction business. The other thing to note is our, um, when we developed HH2 and it began learning as the company. Hey, Kevin. We just, yes, sir. I'm not, I'm not sure if it's my internet or yours, but you're very garbled. Um, Am I? Maybe uh, I'm gonna pick on Lisa. I know Lisa, Lisa, can you send a chat message if it's garbled for you? Or I just wanna make sure that it's not garbled for everyone. And is, yeah, I'll just kind of keep looking if, if uh, not what I may do is just completely, um, just go to the internal speakers, get rid of my pod. Can you hear me okay? Keep talking. Let's, okay, let's chat. It is um, getting a little bit garbled here. Uh, let me know if that's any better. It sounds better to me, Kevin. <laughs> okay, let me do this. Okay. Um, okay, let me know if this is uh, if this is better. We we okay? Yeah, yeah. I think you. I think you're much better. Okay, sounds good. Again, I was noticing some slowness. Let me know, Jeff, throughout. Don't, again, don't hesitate to just stop and say, hey, not sure what the connection is, uh, but I'll, I'll do my best to make sure we'll have a good experience. Okay, so just real quickly for everybody else, just the main thing to know is we build our system from the ground up to integrate seamlessly with both Sage 300 CRE and Sage 100 contractor, okay? So that's important to know. We'll talk a little bit about that here in just a minute. But the other thing to note is our solution was built in the cloud really before the cloud was cool and, and, and where people wanted to go, accessing their software, you know, offsite, remotely, nothing to install on anybody's devices, et cetera. So um, just know that our system was built in the cloud from the ground up. We're not taking an on-premise solution and trying to make it remote. Uh, we support uh, not only a web browser uh, in, in using HH2 um, uh, on a laptop or a desktop computer. There's no software anybody has to download. We also support and have native apps for both iOS and Android devices. So just understand we support both of those platforms. If you're using a Surface tablet, I often get the questions, what about Surface tablets? So you would just use a, a web browser on that tablet. Um, and uh, again, the other nice thing is they are, they are apps that you can download from the Apple App Store, Google Play Store, um, and they can be used offline. You don't have to necessarily have connectivity to use those remotely. Uh, again, we'll talk a little bit more as we go through. Now, again, many of you are here because you've got some time collection issues. Either you're still doing stuff the old fashioned way of handwritten timesheets. Some of you might be doing things with uh, Excel spreadsheets. You might be using a third party software today, but you don't have any integration or they don't have any integration with your specific platform. Um, again, we find other things. Again, does it talk to your accounting system? Can it only be used on a specific device? And do you have remote access? So those are some of the challenges we typically find people that come and explore our software are having. So how does HH2 solve the problem for companies? As I mentioned up front, it really begins with the integration. Again, that was the foundation of our company. We wanted a product that out of the box needed to and must uh, integrate and pull data from the accounting system because we wanted to eliminate the duplication of putting a job in one system and then turning around and entering a job in my third party solution. We wanted to eliminate even the need to take a text file from uh, your uh, accounting system and importing it into a third party application. Well, with HH2, we only need to install one item and it's called an integration client. And that integration client simply pulls data and communicates with your accounting system. So when we first install it, we do what we call a full sync where we pull over all of your data. So we're pulling over all of your jobs, your cost codes, 
uh, your phases, your GLs, your pay groups, your pay IDs, um, your classifications, um, all of that data uh, is pulled into HH2 automatically. Okay, we also pull over your equipment if you're using the equipment module in your accounting system. Now, not only do we pull it over with the initial sync and, and, and run over that, you know, pull that data into our system, but you can decide how often do you want that sync client to run? And you can set it to once a day, once an hour, or what we call a continuous sync. So every five minutes, our sync client will just look it's not going to bog anybody down or kick anybody out of the out of your uh, Sage solution, but we we look for any new information. So if a new job was added, new employee was hired, new cost code, whatever it might be in the accounting system, HH2 will automatically pull it in. Now the vast majority of companies set it to run once an hour because that's adequate for the vast majority of people. Just know that in addition to those three times that I just mentioned. You can also do a manual sync uh, of the sync client uh, to your accounting system anytime, okay? Just on using the web. You don't have to log into Sage or on your server and run the sync client. Just from, uh, from your desktop, just run it as an admin, okay? Now, what does that mean uh, for people out in the field? Well, it simply means that when they go to add a job or a cost code or a new employee to their job site, they're actually choosing jobs and cost codes, et cetera, that came from the accounting system. So one, if you're doing things on paper today, people can just erroneously write in a cost code that they think should be on the job. Well, as the time records get approved and they go back to payroll, somebody in payroll is like, well, hey, this cost code doesn't even exist on this job. So again, that's the beauty of syncing up from the accounting system. Okay, we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go and maybe some best practices. But people in the field, whether they be individuals coding time for themselves or um, a foreman coding time for a group of individuals, um, you can have both people entering time. Okay, you can have a customized approval process, even in different groups. You might have an office group that the time records go right from the employee right to payroll. Just nobody else needs to approve their time. You might have a group out in the field where an employee codes the time, then a group manager reviews and approves, then it goes to a project manager, then to payroll. If you want to get that deep, you could easily do that as well. Okay. Now, eventually, time records get back into Sage. We'll talk about how that works at the end. Again, it's very customizable with multiple time entry methods, multiple ways to code time, multiple levels of approval that we just discussed. I know I'm flying through these just because I, I don't want to bore you with a bunch of slides. We collect units for employees, equipment, mileage, per diem. You know, again, I do know that some of you are Sage 100 users. Uh, for those who are Sage 100, we realize you're limited to the nine pay types. If you're Sage 300, uh, it's really unlimited at that point uh, because you can create as many pay types as you would like in 300. Now, again, we have a host of additional features we have other products. We're gonna, I'm gonna try my best to do remote payroll and daily logs for you today. Uh, we also have some service management, human resources, AP routing and approval, which is an awesome product. If you wanna know more about those, I'll pull up my information at the end and maybe we can schedule some one-on-ones or you can join some of the other subsequent webinars that we've set up with Sockeye. Um, okay, with that being said, let's get out of this. And uh, Jeff, uh, the quality of the sound still working okay? Yeah, it's all it's all good now. All right, perfect. Okay, all right, everybody, let's uh, let's jump into the software now. I could probably show you everything under the sun of what we do here at HH2, but I think I will I will just show you how easy it is to code time. We're going to do a few things on the web browser, and then we're going to pull up a mobile phone. And we'll talk about some functionality. I didn't want to log in. I don't want to log in as an admin. I actually want to log in as a supervisor in the field. And then we'll kind of talk about a few other features. Um, let's see here. Okay. Uh, whoops, sorry about that. 
again, my, my mouse, I've got a little bit of interesting things happening on my screen. I don't know if it's because of the Zoom call or what, but the resources. Okay, I'm gonna log in as a foreman on the job site. And a uh, couple of things to note, first and foremost, because I know that they will come up. Um, off to the left-hand side of my screen, you'll notice that I have remote payroll, uh, or RP, AP, field reports. These are just different modules that you as a company might be signed up for. RP just stands for remote payroll, you know, invoice routing and approval, and then remote, and then field reporting. Uh, you also have here a menu that says, hey, welcome back, Chris. These are your most important pages or most often used, uh, or Charles. So let me just uh, log in as Charles here and talk about this. So up here at the top, uh, this is what we call a daily time card in HH2, okay? And a daily time card simply shows me that it's March 22nd. Here are members of my crew for the day. Now, these are guys that were part of my crew yesterday. Now, if any part of uh, my crew is not here with me today and I don't need to code time with them or for them, I can just simply go into my members tab up at the upper right-hand corner and I might delete somebody like Mark Campbell. And so Mark is no longer part of my crew. However, we just picked up Sean Collins. So I can delete and add people very easily on the fly. Okay, so now there's Sean Collins. You no longer see the other gentleman, et cetera. Um, the other cool thing is I hope you notice when I logged in, it automatically had jobs and cost codes. Now, this isn't just from me coming in here trying to prep for this demonstration. This actually remembers the jobs and the cost codes every day. So if I happen to go in here tomorrow on Wednesday, again, there's the same jobs. And the nice thing about our software is it remembers those. So I don't have to keep adding them to my time card every day. Okay. Now, these boxes that you see here represent pay types that I have given my field personnel access to. Regular and overtime. I know I'll get this question, or oftentimes we'll get it in a presentation. Well, we do regular overtime, premium time, double time, you name it, we have a, a pay type for it or an ID for it. We'll just know that HH2 can support multiple pay types on a given page. And I'm just going to go up here, we're under my pay type group, and just show you an example only to show you that it's available. Maybe I've got a group that says managers overtime. So if I happen to have four pay types that my guys tend to code to on a regular basis, then I might have regular overtime, premium time, and per diem. And this is just from a demonstration that I did a couple of days ago that they needed to see things like that. So just know HH2 helps you configure those so you can see what you want. Well, to make it simple, I can come in here and just uh, put in hours. So if this employee worked, two hours on the Williams post office job doing temp utilities and two hours doing site work. Very simple, very easy. Same thing, trap a motel. Uh, he did temp utilities at that job, but also did some slab prep because these are the Costco's that we added. Okay, now let's do one other thing just so I can show you how it, easy it is to add. Down here below, you can see add jobs and codes. We're gonna pull that up and we're gonna go to the job selector. Now, this shows me the jobs that are found in uh, that this group has access to. You can limit jobs if you need to. Again, there's a host of things that you can do. The other thing I want you to notice here is that we've got different phases uh, that are available. So oftentimes, especially for, well, both stage 300 and 100, people will ask, do you support extras or sub jobs or phases? And the answer is yes. You can see that right here. So if I were to select a different phase, right? And then open up that phase uh, under that job, it would just show me the cost codes that have been set up for that. So just be aware that we support that. I'm not going to do phases today. I'm just gonna stick with regular jobs. I'm gonna do the Woodside Elementary School. Once I choose the job, it shows me the cost codes that have been set up on that specific job with the budget. So if this particular dot job, we're just doing some rough framing and wall framing, 
Maybe that's all we're doing at the present time. I don't need to add every single job or a cost code on there. I can add it. Now, before I leave this screen, because I'm not going to necessarily show this, if your employees change their classifications or in Sage 100, it's called a pay group. If they tend to change their pay group on the fly in the field, going from a, uh, an apprentice, maybe to a finished carpenter, right? Because they're on a prevailing wage job and they change classifications and they need to get paid the rates on those jobs. You can change that. If you guys don't change classifications, that's just fine. Not a lot of people do. Uh, so if I'm not specifying a classification, let me just add that on there now. If I'm not just uh, specifying a classification, if I were to pull up Ryan Adams information in HH2, he's classified as a, a labor apprentice. And again, that's, that's the pay group that we've got set up for him in the, in the site. So anytime that's coded for Ryan on these jobs, if I haven't specified a different classification, all of his time is gonna go to the class on his record. Okay, hopefully that is, uh, makes a lot of sense to people. Now, some of my crew, you know, maybe it's uh, you know, very easy. I've got guys that, uh, sorry, I told you my system's kind of, uh, again, I think it's my whole connectivity with, uh, with Zoom, but I can just put in eight hours, seven and a half, just know that you don't have to put in whole units, et cetera. Now, again, I won't show a lot of this. Some companies are very interested in the whole clock in, clock out process. Know that HH2 supports multiple ways of, um, of doing time in our system. And you can turn on what we call an attendance punch clock, or maybe you're just like, hey, I don't necessarily need my guys clocking in as much as I need the foreman just to come in and say, these three guys or, or the whole crew uh, showed up today at seven, we ended at 3.30, we took our lunch. We could also do some batch attendance features. Now for a lot of companies, one, it serves the purpose of, of uh, you know, taking the requirements, you know, maybe for state or regulatory laws that you need to do the in and out times and did they take their breaks? That's an easy way to do it in HH2. Once again, we do have the ability to clock in and out for the day individually if you need to. What it looks like back on this sheet is the fact that each of these three individuals who I clocked in for the day show a total of eight hours, okay? So just as a review, okay, here's, some, here's why HH2 has been so successful in the construction industry. One, the user interfaces are very nice, they're clean, elegant, and easy to navigate. I showed you today how to add and delete an employee as part of your crew. I showed you how to add a job and a cost code. Uh, we talked about having multiple pay types, so we support any pay type that you've got set up in your system. We've talked a little bit about clocking in and out uh, and one of the ways in which we support it. Um, you can have individual employees clock in and out on their personal devices if you need to. Again, if you want to dive a little bit deeper into that, we might do that on a one-on-one -on -one presentation. And I've shown you how to enter hours uh, into the cost codes there. And I've just shown you a daily timesheet. Now, some of you might have a different view that you like, and we call it a weekly view. So instead of just one employee, I can see multiple employees, or excuse me, instead of seeing multiple employees, I'm just seeing one employee. And it might be as simple as this guy coming in and saying, you know, Charles Anderson just doing his own time. Just putting hours into the system and uh, going out. Now, the nice thing is you've never seen me hit a save button here anywhere, right? it automatically saves the data as I move out of the cell. That's another feature and benefit of HH2. Now, for just some of you who are interested, um, I'll just let you know that we support unit production, oh, excuse me, unit specific comments. So some people need the ability to describe what this employee did for those eight hours on that specific cost code. If you wanna do that, it's a feature of HH2. Okay, so we've covered a lot of territory. Uh, Jeff, has there been any questions at all that have, might have come in on this uh, bit of the exercise?
None so far, sir. Okay. So uh, as Jeff knows, I've either put everybody to sleep uh, or I've, I've talked uh, so much about the product that you have a good handle on the way HH2 works. I'm going to go with option two. <laughs> Thank you. I hope, I hope everybody else is as well. <laughs> okay. All right. Let me just show you one other thing. Um, I, I mentioned we also support equipment time. So we just did time for employees. If you're a company that keeps track of equipment that are on the job sites and you have a revenue rate or whatever that you're charging to that job uh, for that piece of equipment, we su support that as well. So as you can see, very similar to the employee's time card, I've got pieces of equipment where we could just say, hey, you know, we use these pieces of equipment uh, doing these particular things. Okay, so just know that that's available. Uh, uh, also, those of you, again, I had the question the other day on one, hey, uh, can we change the rates, right? So we might have different rates in regards to idle time, uh, daily time, you know, again, it just depends on how you've set up your system. So again, just another way to do time records there. Now, again, we're mobile, right? So what do people want? They want to see, well, that's great. You show me how it looks on a website. Um, let's see how it looks um, on uh, on a mobile phone. So, uh, with that being said, I'm going to pull up my mobile phone. Hopefully, if everything connects okay. Again, I'm having a little bit of latency issues. With uh, there we go. Finally came up. Okay. Uh, again, bear, bear with me. Uh, you can see my lovely face there and my wife. Um, this is my phone, okay? I'm not using some simulator. So let's just kind of look and see what it looks like from a phone's perspective. Um, so right here, um, I'm logged in as the same guy I was on the website, but this is a phone. And we have multiple ways to do time, even on a mobile device. So if I go to a weekly time card, um, Let's go to uh, John Bailey, okay? So we've got uh, some time here for John Bailey. Uh, again, if I'm just, maybe it's very simple. You know, John had eight hours there for three days of the week. Then he had four hours on this job and then went to the Trap and Motel. Uh, you know, uh, was doing a few other things here as well for four hours on Thursday. And then maybe on Friday, he just spent all day doing slab cast in place at this job, okay? Now, also, let's say that this employee had some overtime hours. I'm gonna put in the two overtime hours. I'm gonna show you another feature called that unit specific comments by tapping on detail, tapping in the description. This is why this employee was working on this particular cost code and why we asked him to stay uh, late on the job. Okay, so we just have a unit specific comment so people in the office can see it. So again, other features that I can use, daily timesheets. Um, you can see John already has time for today. If I keep scrolling over, there's Michael Brown. Maybe I'm just doing my time for my guys at the end of the day. He worked three hours there, three hours there, and then two hours on this one, right? And uh, we go to the next employee. So all I was doing is just tapping up here where, where Paul Clark is. Maybe Paul spent more of his time here and uh, some time there. Again, very easy screens. Depends on which screen works best for your company. So adding some of those things. Uh, as you can see down here, we have an attendance punch clock, very similar to what we did on the web. Um, let's, uh, let's go to a different employee. Let's go to uh, Paul Clark and we can clock uh, Paul in as well. Okay, so different features, I can capture a photo, I can specify if they took their lunch breaks, et cetera. So that's how we uh, easily punch people in and out uh, using that particular product. I won't do the equipment side. Um, well, I, I will do one last thing on the equipment time entry. Uh, we'll come in here, we will say that we had the forklift and I'll just show you another way to do time. So we can even choose the days of the week for the full week, say eight hours. I was at the William, we used this piece of equipment on this job. We used it doing temp utilities. I'm not gonna change any of the uh, revenue codes and I add and reset. 
So I successfully just entered time in really less than five seconds on one piece of equipment to a job all week long, okay? So it's a great way to keep track of, of where our equipment is, how often we use it, what job it's on, uh, et cetera. Um, so we've shown you a few other thing, a uh, few of those things, last but not least, so we can get through the products. I would just go to the time approval page. So if an employee has time and he's coded time to my crew, um, I'm logged in as Charles. Again, he's the foreman, but pretend if Ryan Adams did his time, and he spent eight hours working for me this week, I could approve Ryan's time right here. And then other people can approve whatever time he may have worked for that crew. Um, but since I did all of the time today, uh, I could just click the thumbs up at the bottom and approve all of my time, okay? Very easy. Now, the reason I approve time, it's kind of like, if I am doing things by paper today, signing off on the timesheets and handing them to the next person that needs to approve the timesheets that week. But in HH2, they just basically approve on their mobile device or on the web. And it just lets the people know above them, hey, these time records are ready. As far as I'm concerned, it's the, the time's in the system and ready for your review. Now, some companies also require an employee signature. So if I were to come into here, uh, I can uh, go into uh, John Bailey here. Uh, John has 40 regular hours, two hours of overtime. John says, yep, those time records are correct. You can also have an attestation where you can put in here, uh, you know, by signing this time card, you agree to the following. I'll just tap in there and just sign, sign off as John, okay? And I would just pull each employee over and have them sign off on their timesheets. Not only will that be available here on my device, it's saved there, but you'll see as I get to show things on the web, what it looks like for a payroll admin. And before we leave the mobile phone right now, what we're going to do is show you one other feature. Once you process and post your payroll, HH2 has added another feature into our remote payroll product, and that is employees viewing their pay stubs. And I could just open up the HH2 app. I can say, I need my last two months of pay stubs. For as much as it pains me to buy a house in this, uh, at this time, uh, I've got to do it because I think the prices are just going up. Um, you know, I need my pay stubs. And right there, I just picked up two months of pay stubs uh, that came from the accounting system. And, um, you know, I can send them off email them by tapping the button up there, email them, print, and, uh, and send them out. So again, that's included there. Uh, the question about pay stubs that I often get as well, so I'll anticipate maybe some of those. Uh, when do we get that information? When does it sync over? Once you process and then post your payroll, HH2 Sync Client will grab that information, automatically pull that into HH2, so that when those employees go to do a query, uh, that, that data will be there for them. All right, we'll come back to the mobile phone. So I'll just kind of leave that in the background because we're gonna do a field report. But uh, let's do our best right now to um, kind of move on uh, from Charles Anderson. We're gonna log out as Charles. And we're going to log in in my demo side and have it go into somebody else. We'll do this fairly quick. Dave Jones. Dave Jones is a project manager in my demo environment. Uh, Dave Jones come in, comes in here, clicks on a remote payroll and says, hey, I need to go to the time of approval screen. And he sees or she sees whatever uh, time records have been coded to their jobs as a PM. Now, again, I could go a little bit more detail into that, but just know that HH2 supports automatic routing to people in the approval process based upon roles uh, within the company as well. So uh, just be aware that that's available. Um, I noticed that there's some clocked in time. If you remember, Paul Clark is the one we clocked in on the phone. You can see that his shift start time ended at 1229. Now I didn't go through and clock him out because it's kind of irrelevant with a short amount of time. But I just wanted to show you 
how HH2 can uh, at least gather some of that detail. Now, what do project managers want to see? They want to see a little bit more detail on the job. So we'll come in, click on the remote payroll. We're going to go to an area called labor detail report. And this is a great um, screen that I have the ability to scroll down through everybody that's coded time to my jobs. Now, this particular project manager is the project manager over all three of these. I've got to switch some things up in my system. But if I wanted to just run a filter and say, you know what, all I need to see today is anybody that coded time to uh, the Wood Elementary School. That's the one I'm concerned about that I just want to review those hours. I can even filter. I can filter by date range in a number of times. Well, I had three employees this week who worked on this particular job. Chris, Charles, and Paul. They all worked that job on Tuesday. This is what they did, et cetera. So again, some nice things. Uh, you can generate these uh, reports in Excel or PDF. I won't do that in today's presentation, but that's how I can review time. I'm just going to say at this point in time, all of the time looks great to me. I'm going to click thumbs up and say, I've done my part. I've looked at everybody's time. I'm happy with it. So uh, let the uh, payroll admins just kind of do their thing. So I'm going to log in as, a, as an administrator in HH2 and see all of the time records again. So if I go to the time approval screen, again, it it's, couldn't be easier for people to just go to that main menu, click on their most used places, and go right to the screen. Now, payroll admin, they're, they're a different bunch. They've got to make sure all the time looks correct. They have got to look at the cost codes. Typically right now, if you're doing things on paper, you're really looking through the cost codes because you don't even know if some of those are set up on the job. Again, HH2 is going to eliminate some of those needs for you because you know that every single job in cost code that they use in HH2 are legitimate because they came from the accounting system. However, with that being said, Let's go to a different area just to kind of review everybody's time where we can make changes if necessary. Let's say, although for Ryan Adams, um, this cost code is correct on the Williams Post Office job, it is a legitimate code. Let's say that we were called and said, hey, you know what, the two hours that I put down for him on Tuesday, the 22nd on this job, uh, can you change that for me? Because he really wasn't working on temp utilities. Uh, he was working on concrete. Okay. So I could easily just change it before it even gets into the accounting system. I can change it right here in HH2. Now, don't be afraid. That even if you import time from HH2 into your accounting system, it's not locked. You can still update or change it in your accounting system as well. I just wanted to show you prior to. The other thing that you will see in here, if you remember these hours, these overtime hours that we put in place for this job, we've got the trap and motel. This is why this employee was working. Again, we call that a unit specific comment in case I need to just share anything with the office and they can see it very, very easily. So we've shown you how to make some changes. Uh, here's really where the magic happens though. Um, it's, it's really after you've reviewed time and you're ready to uh, import it, you just simply click thumbs up. You've got a button right here that says export. And we will export these transactions to, uh, to Sage. Now, I do know, again, we've got some Sage 100, some Sage 300 people maybe on here as well. This is the only section where there's a differentiation in how the product works. Right now, this is actually synchronizing with my uh, database, my Sage 100 database. And in probably about, oh, I was going to say another 10 seconds or so, it's going to let me know if my transactions succeeded or failed or going into Sage. Now, I, you know, on my demo today, I've got 22 records, individual line items that we just pushed in directly into Sage, into the 551 daily time entry screen. For those of you who are Sage 300 CRE, you just do a text file and then you import it into payroll, okay? So again, Sage 100 goes in there. I was gonna show the integration, but I think I'll just kind of dispense with that. If any beyond, 
everybody on this call needs to see that these time records that we just coded today in Sage, let me know and I'll be happy to log in. But I'm just going to kind of bypass that for the moment, unless there is a need. Okay. Um, Jeff, were there any questions uh, that may have come in again from, uh, from anyone uh, about this whole process? Approval, review? Hey, I think you're still killing it, Kevin. Okay, great. Very good. Um, just know, I won't necessarily go into here, but you can print out a copy of the PDFs of everybody's timesheets. At any time, we never delete your data. It's always available. So if you're going through an audit and uh, somebody's disputing something, HH2 is a great resource. You can always go back in here and look at any data that's been signed, the fact that they signed off, they weren't injured on the job, et cetera. Now, um, we talked a little bit about gathering a daily log, okay, on today's, um, Demo. So let me try to pull up my phone again. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go to another application. It's called Field Reports. And I'm going to go to my settings and I'm going to go to my tab configuration. And I want to go to a single page view. And I just wanted to go to my settings. We're going to go to today. Okay. Um, so uh, one of the challenges that many construction companies face is um, having their guys do daily logs in the field, right? Time entry is great because everybody needs to get paid, but these managers, they get busy on the job and they're like, hey, uh, you know, doing a daily report is kind of tedious the way we're doing it today on paper. Well, with HH2, uh, what I did is I just went to this screen. I tapped on the 22nd where we have a report. The nice thing is since I've done payroll, it will show me the guys that were on this job. I only had two that I recorded to on this job. I can easily uh, grab the weather from this job site. Uh, right now, this particular job site is sunny at 79 degrees. Um, and so I was able to pull in the weather. And I could do that multiple times during the day if weather is a big deal for your company. My payroll is already on there. If I'm keeping track of subs or other people that showed up on the job, I can either copy from a previous day or just enter a new one. I'm just going to choose a sub because again, it's something that we pulled over. Um, maybe we've got the Armstrongs safe and lock company. We have them uh, doing some stuff on the doors. I'll put they did. Uh, they sent uh, two guys. Um, I'll say that they worked a total of uh, eight man hours. And then some notes. This is a note about what this company did uh, installing the locks throughout the building. Okay. And we can save that note. Okay. So we're just keeping track of contractors, subcontractors, or people that showed up on my job and are, uh, are, are doing a few things there, okay? Now, I'm not sure, yeah, we did some time for the pieces of equipment. You see those showed up there. You might wonder, why do you have two different tabs? Uh, just because in HH2, they are, uh, they're handled a little bit differently than, than one another. Um, but uh, just know that we can do the same thing for pieces of equipment there. Um, materials, that's for materials that have arrived on site. I won't use that because I, I hear that a lot of people don't necessarily keep track of that. So I won't do every single tab. Uh, the events tab is something that a lot of people will do. So I might choose an event. I can choose a start and an end time. Maybe we had an injury uh, and we just want to specify, hey, it happened today at 1244. Uh, I could select the contact. It happened to, uh, you know, Tony, uh, maybe he was running a piece of equipment. You can see all of the things that you can do. This is a simple note as to what happened on the job site uh, to Tony. And we can add that, uh, that specific item as well. Um, we also have some visitors ent entries, uh, journal entries, et cetera. Maybe we had a delay on the job. This is why we had a delay on the job due to the injury to Tony. You know, we kind of had to stop some work. Maybe OSHA was coming. 
uh, et cetera. And then uh, any meeting notes, uh, if we wanted to, or add attachments, um, I can come in here. We'll take a quick photo outside my window here um, in the office. We'll go ahead and save that. Again, for some of these guys, just simply being able to pull out their mobile device, add um, some notes, might make it much, uh, much easier and better for um, them to be able to, you know, be willing to do some of these reports for you. Okay. So I'm just going to uh, just do a quick sync. I wanted to look at some data again, due to the, some of the connectivity I'm having right now, that stuff is letting me know that uh, it's saving it here. Um, but I, I don't believe it's headed to, again, just because of my environment today, that is not saving to the website. Okay. So and I, the reason I know that is just because some of the red line items that uh, I'm, uh, I'm seeing here. There we go. Okay, we're just going to manually upload each one of those. I apologize that uh, I've had some issues today with having those automatically upload there. Okay, now again, that's how easy it is to do from my device. Let's go back to the website. We're going to uh, click on the field report tab. Open that up and we're going to go to the daily log calendar. Take a look around and see what we uh, we can see here. So on the Williams Post Office job, I see that we've got an entry for today. If I were to pull up that data on the website, you can see my weather. There's the people that I coded time for payroll. There's my Armstrong safe and lock. This is what they did. Uh, there's the events uh, that took place, the journal entry, and uh, the photo. So if I wanted to take a look and see what happened at that job or, you know, what happened to the injury, there's the, a close-up photo there. So again, it couldn't be any easier. Within five minutes, I captured or so captured a daily log in the field. Okay. And hey, Kevin. Yes. We did have a couple questions come in. Perfect. And um, one we did have a request to show the integration, if you could, with the Sage 100 contractor today. And then okay. part two of that is a question regarding how is overtime handled by day versus week? Okay. Um, okay, so let's tackle while I'm logged. Well, it actually uh, automatically logged me in here. Let me do something here. Let's tackle what it looks like in Sage 100. So I'm gonna go back into here. I'm gonna go back into daily payroll, payroll entry. I could have, I know, gone in a couple of different ways. Now, I did a demo yesterday. So you'll see a lot of different time entries here. It's Tuesday, March 22nd. And remember we had, um, you know, a few employees with time entries that were today. They had some time on the Trap and Motel, Wood Elementary. So all of the time records that I just imported today are right there. So that's where, that's where it uh, goes into the 551 daily payroll entry. Uh, Sage automatically does the calculations. If I, again, if I would have changed the classification on this employee, um, I could have in HH2, but it, again, it automatically fills out based upon the pay group that's set up on the employee record. So that's, uh, that's what it looks like there. Now, let's address the question in regards to the overtime by day and by week. Um, because of job cost of time in construction uh, and because of different states and regulations, HH2 at this present time does not have the ability to automatically distribute overtime uh, in our system. And let me tell you a quick reason why. And that is, if you think about it, for those employees that coded to multiple jobs in that day and multiple cost codes, what happens when uh, the last job that they start to code time to uh, automatically has the overtime go out of that job? Well, if you think about it, should it be that job, the last one, that should get the overtime. And if there were multiple cost codes, which cost code should the overtime go to? 
So with that explanation, at this time, HH2 doesn't automatically distribute over time. Your company policy would be whatever your company policy is. That's why we have an approval process within HH2 to allow the payroll admin to go through and look at, we go back here, so probably make a little bit more sense, to actually look at anybody with overtime. So you can do filters and things like that. So if I really wanted to see John Bailey's entire timesheet, I didn't really go into this section, but you can decide, well, did he have more than eight hours on a given day? Or was it toward the end of the week? Maybe one of these days he actually worked 10 hours, yet because it wasn't a full 40 yet, um, we didn't, you know, he, he didn't deserve overtime that day until some time was put in Friday. So again, it allows you to go through each individual's timesheet collectively, determine if they should have had overtime on a given day and allow you to change that before it goes into the accounting system. That's how we handle it. Did that, did that answer your question? I can actually see, I guess I could see that chat. Okay, uh, Lisa, so did that, did that make sense? And do you have any questions at all, Lisa, about what I just explained, either showing what it looks like going into SAGE or how I explained the overtime? Okay, hopefully, I haven't seen anything back. Maybe Lisa's still typing. Um, if it doesn't, Kevin, and she responds. Uh, oh, there we go. Oh, okay, perfect. Got it. Thanks, Lisa. All right. Okay. All right. Wonderful. Okay. All Lisa, right, Kevin, you got about eight minutes. I know you're pretty <laughs> much done, and I'll let you just give any of the heads up on where you're at. And I know you want to cover pricing and stuff as well. Okay, excellent. Okay, we'll make it simple. Uh, again, I appreciate everybody's time. I had forgotten when I said we'd be brief today, I, I'm like, I didn't realize or didn't remember that I was gonna show both products. So thank you for spending the full hour with us. So as Jeff mentioned, typically at the end of my presentations, um, I like to pull up my contact information, which I will hear in a second. If you want to know how HH2's pricing works, just simply go to our website, Go to hh2.com. Again, it's very simple and easy. Uh, if you click on our products right here in the menu, you'll see all of the different products that I, I you know, just covered real briefly at the beginning. Today, we covered these two products, the time entry and reporting, remote payroll, and the daily logs or HH2 field reports. For pricing on remote payroll, uh, you can click on learn more click on the pricing page, uh, and you can see the various tiers that we have available. Now, everybody that shows or signs up with HH2, their first month, they always start out at the very opening tier. And we do have two different price, pricing uh, uh, line items there. Pro support, everybody's required to have for their first year, just gives you additional support incidents with HH2. Don't get too concerned when I say additional. Um, it just means that for the first year, we're really going to, uh, you know, take care of all of your needs. Well, we would do that anyway, but pro support just simply means, you know, you've got access to our, our team. Uh, we're going to be jumping on things very, very quickly, uh, you know, with you, uh, with any issues. After the first month, so zero to 25 employees, this is not user-based. It's really based on the number of employees or pieces of equipment that actually had time coded for them in HH2. Uh, so let's say uh, we've got 50 employees as a company, but only 25 of them uh, will have time in our system. Well, then you might stay down at that tier. And then you say, well, we're gonna roll it out to everybody in the company. Well, at the end of the month, if you have 50 employees with a time record in HH2, you would be billed 349. If you are going to use the equipment side, uh, it's only for pieces of equipment that have time coded for them. A lot of people get worried. They may have 200 pieces of equipment, but they only code time for 100 of them. Um, so 
again, it just depends on the number of employees or pieces of equipment that actually had a time record coded for them in our system at the month. We do not charge by user licenses or seats. Once you subscribe to HH2, any of our products, you can have unlimited users on any of the products that we have. Now, as it says up here, there are some additional signup fees as we uh, set you up, train you, go through that process. Um, if you want to quote, um, Lisa, you've asked a lot of questions today. If you want to know more, want to quote from HH2, um, just let me know and, and you and I can work together uh, on that. If you want to know about uh, field reports, click on the home, um, well, go into the products, sorry, and click on the field reports page and click on pricing. Field reports, again, another product, very simple. We don't have the pro support tiers on this one. Um, it's just $99 a month uh, for your first month when you sign up. And then it's based on the total number of reports that you create during the month. And it just resets every single month. Okay. So if one, you know, today I just created one daily log for you on the presentation that will count toward my daily logs in the month of March. Okay. Even though I collected multiple items. So pretend you've got 10 active jobs. Every job does a field report every day. 20 days, uh, working days in a month, uh, you might have 200 reports if your guys are all doing their daily logs. But you can see from 99 to 135 really isn't much for you know really an additional 100 reports there. And it just scales up and scales down at the end of every month. There are no long-term contracts to sign with HH2. It's a month-to-month -month subscription. And uh, we again, we've got a lot of happy customers and we've been working with Jeff and John for, again, years. So thank you so much, Jeff. I'm going to, uh, as I hand it back to you, uh, I'm going to pull back up uh, my contact information, if you don't mind. Yeah, perfect. While you're doing that, hey, thanks so much, Kevin. Really appreciate it and great job. And as always, the products are great products, the integrations, really seamless kind of customers using really all of these products. And uh, so it's been, been a very nice relationship. And, you know, anybody can reach out to Kevin directly. Uh, also, um, you can reach out to me at jwilliamson at sockeyeconsulting.com. Also, we'll send a follow-up email afterwards. We'd love to hear how we did, short little survey. You can also indicate if you want somebody to follow up with you there as well. So thanks, Kevin. We uh, wrapped up with two minutes to spare, so we did good. <laughs> Very good. Jeff, thanks so much. I appreciate it. Everybody have a good day. Uh, thanks again for the questions, Lisa. And I uh, hope to hear from uh, everybody soon. Have a good one. All right. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.